<laughs> What's up, guys? Chez Critter. Yeah, um, so, no, I don't think anything's gonna go Mad Max, and, uh, I don't believe that I've ever said that specifically. Now, my point is that, uh, look, the Great Depression, nine million people supposedly starved or died of, uh, you know, malnutrition-related diseases, okay? Was everything Mad Max? No, it was a severe economic downturn. And if you extrapolate that out to the population of today, it would be a lot worse. Okay, things don't need to go Mad Max for the local resident population to have a very hard time. Look at Greece right now. They still have a somewhat functioning economy, yet they're all lining up for food handouts. Well, not all of them, but there's a lot of people that are going without. Medicine shortages, because their system is breaking down. The only person that thinks that they want Mad Max is a uh, Rambo prepper, and he's a dead man anyways. Again, we've had this discussion. Now, even the people behind the people, behind the curtains, okay, they don't want it. It doesn't benefit anybody, and I don't think that society will ever trend in that direction pending something absolutely catastrophic happening, like a natural disaster that uh, really just wipes everything out, maybe a uh, EMP type thing. Even then, I think people will organize. Uh, pandemic, maybe, maybe, if it was incredibly virulent and went around the world. But I think that the, the possibility of sporadic Mad Max type stuff is, is very likely, and I think that it's in our future. Now, a quick example of something like this is the Egyptian Revolution. Okay. If you recall, everyone was touting like, oh, they're, they're standing up for their freedom, but there was a lot that wasn't reported on in the mainstream media. Uh, as readily. And that was the fact that the bad element came out when people were quote unquote fighting for their freedom. Now, they went and started looting and ransacking neighborhoods. Okay, while the protesters are out, the bad element comes out. There's a lot of those people out there, like we've discussed. So, what did the communities do? Well, they set up roadblocks. They came out with sticks and rocks and baseball bats and lead pipes. And they said, if you don't live in our neighborhood, you are not getting by. Okay? That's, that's a situation where law and order breaks down, and people band together, and they come up with a solution. Okay? Same thing if you have sporadic outages in certain essential services. Okay? And, and that's why I recommend organizing and becoming proficient in skills that you might need in the event that these services break down. Okay, especially food storage. That's a big one. If you end up in a uh, shortage situation in your grocery store, your local markets, if the distribution uh, system slows down and you have a bunch of food, you're not going to be affected by it. Okay, that's another reason why I advocate for self-defense. Whatever you find that works for you, make sure you have it. Because if you need it and you don't have it, we all know how that saying goes. But Mad Max, I, I do consider highly unlikely. I mean, you're, you're talking about... Mad Max is no economy. I mean, it's beyond anarchy. Even in anarchy, you're going to have some form of functioning economy. People are going to do commerce with each other. Things are going to go back and forth. Trades are going to be made. People will come to agreements. Okay, Mad Max, and at least this is how I define it. Mad Max is killing, pillaging, stealing for what you need. That's your economy. You know, this guy has some, this guy doesn't, I kill him, get get what he has. That's that's my idea of Mad Max, and uh, nobody really stands a chance in that, in that sort of scenario. But the one thing that people do have going for them in times of disaster, in times of need, they do have the ability to organize, and this happens at an organic level. Even people that never knew anything was coming, when something comes a-knocking, it's going to be the natural order of things. I, I think that a lot of people... Maybe I haven't been clear enough, but I think when, when a lot of people envision what I say, when I say, you know, many people will die in a, a, a breakdown type scenario, I think that they envision, uh, you know, Day of the Dead or Dawn of the Dead, whatever, where you wake up one day and all of a sudden everyone's running around, their hair's on fire, cars are smashing into houses. I, I consider a scenario like this highly unlikely unless everyone loses their mind all at once. Because a breakdown doesn't manifest itself in, in that way. Even if the currency collapsed, let's say the dollar collapsed overnight. Okay, let's say over the weekend something happens, you wake up, dollar index drops to 30. For whatever reason, okay? Whatever reason. 
uh, you're still not going to have an instantaneous chaotic situation. Things will go on, people will still attempt to do commerce, and then you're going to start to see disruptions. Okay, These disruptions will become more and more frequent until they become disruptive to the average person. And, and this is why I say in my last video, I don't, I don't know if I said it or not, but if you don't pay attention to the economy, it doesn't mean that it's not going to pay attention to you, and it doesn't mean that it's not going to affect you in some sort of way, shape, or form. In fact, the basic economics uh, of our system, of any system, affect every single person on a daily basis. And that's why I'm amazed that more people don't pay attention. You know, it's the dancing with the stars and all this other stuff. And I think <laughs> you'll know that things are getting bad when people are more concerned with economics than they are the latest celebrity gossip or the latest uh, crazy news event or the cutest new YouTube video about uh, cuddly kittens. So, yeah, Mad Max, uh, highly unlikely, highly unlikely. Not realistic in the slightest sense, but you don't need Mad Max for things to get dangerous. You know, in, in uh, Argentina, uh, I follow Fairfowl, and he documented basically what he went through. And this was functioning government. The government continued to function. Now, it turned over many times, and corruption started to step in. And it got to the point where you couldn't trust really anybody, even a government official. You know, imagine being shook down by your local police officer. That's a very real possibility in a breakdown scenario, breakdown crisis. But uh, the, the idea that that all hell will break loose, I mean, that's nobody wants that. Nobody benefits from it. I don't care if, if you believe in some vast conspiracy. How is it going to benefit people at the top? Really? I, or maybe criminals, I guess, because uh, supposedly in this type of scenario, <laughs> all the criminals would be let out of jail. So maybe them. Maybe they're going to be the ones that, that look forward to this this type situation. But uh, for the most part, yeah, I think that uh, the L.A. riots okay, are a great example of this. And I harp on this. Complete breakdown of law and order. Who are the only shops that didn't get robbed, get their windows smashed in, and burned to the ground? Koreatown. Okay? You know why? They stood outside their stores, and they started shooting warning shots. And guess who scattered? like cockroaches. That's right, the rioters. The people that didn't have a clue what was going on, the people that saw a crowd and tire fires, and the delivery guy, the fa it's a famous uh, footage. The guy's kind of driving in, and a big crowd gathers in front of his truck. Well, now, in the interest of self-preservation, I know what I would do. I'm not going to tell you, but it's pretty obvious if you got your truck's engine running and you're in the driver's seat. What did this guy do? He stopped to see what was going on. You know, stop, 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 don't run us over, don't run us over. What'd they do? They ran up to his truck, ripped him out of his truck, and smashed his face in with a cinder block. He almost died. Okay, I think like 58 people died in the LA riots. And that happened in civil society, everything broke down. So that's, that's what I'm saying you gotta get prepared for. That might look like Mad Max. It's not gonna be a permanent scenario. But being ready for it, mentally, physically, having the right tools at your disposal, <laughs> realizing danger when you see it, I mean, that's, that's what amazes me, that uh, people don't recognize a dangerous situation when it's right in front of them. You know, you got to listen to that internal alarm clock. And th that's, that's really my thoughts on, on the Mad Max scenario, and, uh, you know, if I've ever if I've ever led anybody down that road to think that it's ever gonna go Mad Max, I apologize for that because that is something that's completely unthinkable and really I can't think of an instance in history where a Mad Max type scenario has been sustained. I mean look at look at failed states, Somalia. I mean, it's it's a brutal society to live in. It's a real tough life. But guess what? Commerce goes on. There are people that starve there. There are people that live very well there by their standards. And, you know, you got the, the pirate-type societies that, that are out there. <laughs> they tend to do very well, assuming they're not getting shot by Navy SEALs. My point is, people will organize. It's not going to be every man for himself type melee, all-out, Mad Max brawl. That's fantasy land. That's Hollywood. It's entertaining to watch. Uh, it might be fun to kind of think about, but... In real life, guys. No way. No way. 
maybe you guys can think of a scenario other than a pandemic or like a, you know a solar flare knocking out the entire globe but I, I don't see it at all